I will quickly go. I have some slides to quickly go over before I I show the, the code and the the, the, the framework. So, uh, so the uh, so uh, this is a tutorial for Auto Derpa, automatic uh, neural network verification library. So uh, the concept uh, we use is uh, computational graphs, where more deep learning works, uh, deep learning frameworks are used to describe the computation of neural networks. Like for for on the graph, we have the data and the weights as the input, and we have some computation functions, and then eventually we get the final output. For example, uh, the uh, uh, prediction scores. Uh, and uh, uh, for a no normal neural network uh, uh, learning, a uh, deep learning framework like uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch, uh, what we have is like we, we have this, we define this computational graph and we give the framework like uh, PyTorch or TensorFlow our inputs. The inputs are basically the data inputs and the model weights are the inputs of a computational graph and then we get a prediction output. And here, uh, as we all know, we are doing the verification setting. So in our case, we need to consider a set of input, and we want to give the lower and upper bound of the function. That is exactly our uh, framework is doing. And we doing we are doing it on a general computational graph defined in PyTorch. And you still give the input to the graph, but the input is going to be a perturbation set. So you give a few perturbation set for, for the graph, and you define the graph. And uh, we will give you uh, the lower bounds and upper bounds for, for the output. That's basically a high level goal this framework is uh, trying to do. So, uh, so this library basically extends the existing linear relaxation based perturbation analysis algorithm, uh, which includes cron and deep poly. So, the two algorithms are essentially uh, the same. So, there I, I saw a lot of people uh, using deep poly. So, this algorithm essentially also implements the deep poly for general computation graph on pet and it is integrated into PyTorch. So, you can uh, use that easily. Uh, so uh, the, the the goal is to build a, a automatic framework to to do this uh, computation without any uh, human intervention on computing and deriving and implementing this kind of bounds for any general L, uh, general network such as the LSTM. So uh, and we we can do a lot of things like the CN, ResNet, DanceNet, LSTM transformers, and so on. And uh, uh, and we can we can also allow perturbation analysis on weights because weights are also inputs of, of the computation graph and uh, they are, can be treated the same way as the data. And, and we our bounds are also differentiable and they can be accelerated on GPUs, which is important for training uh, for a verifiable uh, neural network because we the bounds are itself are differentiable. We can take gradients for the bounds with respect to the model weights and we can update the model weights. To, to make the bounce tighter. So uh, uh, I will now introduce uh, the high-level APIs of the ISC library. So there are basically three important uh, class you need to be aware of. The one is called a bounded module, bounded uh, tensor, and the uh, uh, perturbation LP norm. This is for L defined LP norm perturbation. So the high-level flow is like this. You first define the model. Uh, as a regular n dot module, that's a basically the way you define uh, uh, you you come your neural network in PyTorch. You basically define your neural network as zero in, in any uh, PyTorch uh, example. You you will need an n module object to define your model. And, and uh, after you initialize your model, you basically load a batch of data. And you, you the first step you need to do is you wrap the model uh, with our library. So you wrap the model with the bounded module. Class, so you get a, another model. This model behaves the same, behaves similarly as the original model, but the only you, you gain the capability of computing bounds uh, of, of this wrapped model object. And now you define the perturbation. Here we are just using LP norm perturbation, uh, and uh, we we have a class for describing uh, LP norm this uh, perturbation. It's called perturbation LP norm. You give it a norm. You give the epsilon, and we can suppose more general perturbations as well. You can define your own perturbation class. I will mention that later. And uh, lastly, you, you define a, a bounded tensor, which which is basically the same as Pytorch tensor. But you can give it a perturbation to to so so that we know like how how much the tensor will be perturbed, and uh, after that you the last step is to compute the bounds. So uh, the our library produce, uh, provides a method called compute the bounds, and it basically gives the uh, gives the library a tensor a bounded tensor object, and it will specify the method and it gives you the bound. 
So the, those are the APIs. So the bounded module object is basically the wrapper of the dot module, and uh, what, how it works is basically build a trace graph. Uh, giving a N module and uh, construct the uh, uh, construct the bounds based on the trace graph. So because we have to build this computational graph first to, in order to compute the bounds, uh, we need to give the model some some fake input. So here, uh, uh, my input this variable is a fake input to to this bounded module object. So the the shape is important, but the contents is not important. You just need to uh, go over the computational graph once. So, so that our library knows how your computation looks like, and we can build uh, another computational graph which computes the bounds. Um, and the next step is uh, a perturbation LP norm uh, object. It basically defines the perturbation. It's very straightforward. And we support L0, L1, L inf and L infinity norm bounds. And you can define other kind of perturbations. And we provide examples on, like uh, in natural language processing, you can define the synonym per perturbations. And uh, the only thing you need to implement is some concretization function that converts a linear, re linear relaxation based bounds to some two concrete points. FL and FU basically are the lower and upper bounds uh, of this function. Uh, and uh, we have the bounded tensor object, as I mentioned, basically a tensor with a perturbation object. And you, you, we also have a so-called bounded parameter object for if you have perturbation on the model width. So it similarly it works similarly as bounded tensor, but it also registered itself as a model parameter. Uh, and lastly, we have the compute bounds function. And you, you give the compute bounds function some bounded tensor as input, and you give the method. The method can be, uh, uh, we support like IBP and Cron. Cron is basically the same as deep poly. And we also call it a backward, a backward manner uh, bound analysis method. And we also support a forward uh, manner bound analysis. I, I will not talk about too much details here, but there, there are several methods we support. For, for verification. And and uh, okay, any questions uh, before I start the, the demo? Yes, I have some questions. Um, sure. Concerning your inputs, uh, so it's a tensor, uh, uh -huh. but uh, uh, it's uh, can you define a kind of intervals or it's a really uh, uh, data points that you use to 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 have a, an idea of your input space? Oh, so for the input space, uh, it works like this. So you, you first you define your perturbation, like what kind of perturbation you want. You, for example, here the example is the LP norm based perturbation. It's mm -hmm. L infinity norm with epsilon equals 0 0.1. And I can apply that perturbation for some input. So my input is a tensor input. And I build a bounded tensor object, which basically uh, just a PyTorch tensor with a perturbation property. So this tensor has a special property, which is a perturbation we need to consider. And we will propagate that perturbation through the network. OK. So this, the perturbation is going to be uh, around this input tensor. So suppose we have input x uh, as uh, my input here. And we have perturbation defined as L, in, L infinity perturbation. And that's going to be just the L infinity ball around the input. So that's the uh, perturbation. Okay, because in fact, the, in the graph, uh, you could uh, feel that in fact, uh, in the in the slide thirteen, uh -huh. the two graphs are below. In fact, you could say, okay, S is my uh, input space, and I have let's say yeah. bounds, let like scalar bounds, let's say in this case, mm -hmm. uh, lower and upper bounds that are yeah. on the full uh, input uh, space S, let's say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the S is basically the, the perturbation. S is okay. the perturbation. Okay, yeah. so it's very uh, local, uh, okay, local stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. And uh, also an idea of uh, the the kind of perturbations that you that you include in the in, in for the moment in uh, in your library. Uh huh. Oh, well, what so, what kind of perturbations do you have? Maybe you will uh, talk about it after. Or? Yeah. So so far we we have implemented all the LP norm perturbations. Like P can be zero, one, two, or L infinity. So it covers okay. L zero. L zero is basically sparsity perturbation. L one, L two, and L infinity. This is common perturbations. And we also have an example of uh, handling the perturbation in natural language processing. Uh, like uh, uh, you have, you can change the words in, in a sentence, and the perturbation is the word change in, in a sentence. Okay. 
So basically, uh, to define, it's not hard to define a new perturbation. You suppose you have uh, your own application that's that's using some non-LP normal perturbation. So what you need to do is basically uh, the perturbation class needs to convert this linear lower and upper bounds into the concrete lower and upper bound numbers. So basically, uh, our bound propagation technique gives you this linear upper and bound for the neural network. And uh, given that bounds, like how, 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 how you need to consider all the worst case perturbations in this set S to find the, the true lower, the, the concrete number of uh, FL and FU as the lower and upper bounds. So okay. that, that's what you need to do if you need to provide a new kind of perturbation. You need to solve, uh, so essentially you need to solve some, uh, some uh, uh, solve a very linear, uh, solve a very simple uh, linear uh, optimization problem, but that's not on this slide. Uh, let me see if it's on some other slide. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely on my paper, but uh, I didn't put too much math here. Uh, so you for handling other kind of perturbation, you need to solve one simple optimization problem like this. Okay. So because uh, our method is based on linear relaxation of neural networks, so eventually you will get a linear lower bound and a linear upper bound of the network, and the perturbation set is defined as S, and you need to solve you, you perturb the perturbation class basically is gonna solve those two optimization problems. Mm -hmm. Uh, which are usually easy because it's just a linear, uh, yeah. a linear problem. For for the LP norm setting, it's very easy. For other settings, uh, it should be easy uh, as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. So, any other questions regarding any questions regarding uh, this framework and uh, this paper uh, before I started show the, the code? Uh, it's 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 PyTorch. Uh, yeah, it's PyTorch. Yeah. yeah. Any, uh, maybe you're not interested. It's, it's the same question that we ask. Uh, uh -huh. uh, I don't know when uh, where people were working on TensorFlow and to and to extend to PyTorch. Uh, do, is it uh, no, is it in your roadmap to to address uh, TensorFlow or not at all? And uh, maybe not. <laughs> not no, no, no. Your, your you can term. say no. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Because okay. yeah, it's, this kind of uh, implementation is quite uh, platform dependent. So we use a lot of tricks in PyTorch to accelerate the bound computation, and it can be very hard to re implement everything yeah, yeah, in, okay. in, in TensorFlow. Uh, yeah, so okay, maybe that's not a near near term no, 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 goal, no, but yeah. <laughs> But we just hope uh, TensorFlow, will, uh, PyTorch will be easier for, for most people. Yeah. So now, now we go over this demo. You can also open this on your computer. So I, I create a link here. It's, it's for auto Lirpa, uh, uh dash demo, favorite code.cc slash auto Lirpa, uh, dash demo. So we'll, we'll get this code app. So uh, the first step is, of course, uh, install this library. And uh, this is very easy. You, you can manually clone this repository, but you can also uh, use a pip to install library in OneLine. So this is our repository, by the way. So uh, uh, I will uh, go over like the coding code structure later, and we'll focus on showing you a very simple example first. So after you install the library, so of course you need to uh, do some like common PyTorch imports and also some imports from the auto library, library, uh, like the bounded bound, bounded module, bounded tensor, and also include some perturbations. Um, and here we, in this example, we define a 18 layer REST net. So we, we basically copy the REST net code from some other code base. And it's just some standard definition of REST net and uh, just some convolution batch norm, uh, uh, pooling layers, and some, some shortcut, shortcut uh, between the layers, and, and so on. So it's just some standard REST net definition, define the REST net. And you can change this definition to any of your models as well. So it doesn't matter. Um, and uh, now we initialize this model. And I prepared some pre-trained model to, to, to be used. But you can also load your model and uh, uh, you pre-trained uh, 
uh, per trend model as well. So it doesn't, uh, so this is just for preparation. And uh, we, we load the data set here. I use the CFR10 data set just to provide some uh, test image so that we can use. And uh, here I also print the prediction of the network. So the ground truth label is two. And you can see that uh, the, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this one has the largest logic. Um, so far, everything is just a standard procedure in PyTorch. We define the, mo define the, the model as an n dot module object, and uh, we initialize the model, and we load the mo load a checkpoint, and uh, uh, we load the data set, and now we start to use the uh, auto layer library. Uh, as I just mentioned, the first step is to wrap the model with the bounded module object. So we, we give the bounded module object uh, a model, and give it some input. This input actually is not the, the, the contents of the input is not used. It's just for constructing the, the computational graph. So you just give it some random tensor. As long as its shape is correct, it's going to be good. Here, uh, this module supports some options. And here, the option we pass to this uh, class is uh, use the patches convolutional uh, convolution mode. This cannot speed up uh, computation on convolutional neural networks. That's why. We have it here, but if you are not using convolutional neural network, you, you don't need this uh, bound option. This is just for spin up uh, CNN computation. And we set the model to evaluation mode. And here we de define the perturbation. Uh, it's just going to be a L infinity norm perturbation with some small epsilon. Because this model is uh, uh, quite large, we, we cannot really do a large epsilon. Um, so we, we define the perturbation uh, class. And we create this bounded tensor object using the original image. Uh, this is the input, the input tensor, and the perturbation around that input tensor, and this is wrapped as a bounded tensor. And you can use the bounded tensor normally just as a regular tensor. You can you can also use this bounded module, bounded model as usually as a model. For example, you can you can just do forward propagation and get a prediction. And it doesn't really matter here, and uh, you you'll get the same result as here. Here is here is before we wrap the model and tensor, you get this prediction, and after we wrap the model and tensor, you also get the same prediction. So it doesn't really does not affect any normal operations uh, if you use our library. And the last step is to compute the bounds. So here we just call this compute bounds function. Uh, with x as the input is bounded the tensor as the input, and we specify the method. The method can be uh, uh, backward means crown or deep poly. Um, and maybe I can add here is also the same as deep poly. We, we unify it. I call it a backward, and we, I can also say crown here. It does it also works. And uh, to save memory, we we, we use the torch node graph. If we don't need the uh, we, if, you, if you don't need the gradient of the bounds, you can use torch down no graph. It saves memory because the computational graph can be quite complicated. It takes a lot of memory if you need to need to get also get the gradients. And we define a function to print the bounds. And after you get the bounds, bounds are just the LB and UB. You just uh, this is just one single line for getting the bounds. And uh, and we, we can print the bounds. And you can see we can bound the. Uh, after uh, the input perturbation, F, suppose the uh, image is x0 and we add small delta, uh, it's, a, uh, it's some a bounded allocero noise, and we can bound the output of each neuron. For example, here we, we show that the, uh, the second class, uh, the output is between 1.83 and 7.537, and even the worst case, 1.83 is going to be uh, larger than the upper bounds than all the other classes. So we can guarantee that with this perturbation, uh, the per uh, the output of the class fair does not change. It's always going to predict uh, class 2. And uh, we also support some other uh, bounds like IBP, but uh, uh, IBP is quite loose, like on the same uh, perturbation, same input, you get a very loose bound like this. This uh, some vacuous bounds so not really useful. Uh, here, uh, if you run crown or deep poly, you get a much tighter bounce in this example. Um, and uh, last, I will show. Uh, so, any questions regarding this bound computation procedure? Okay, if there's no questions. No, no, that's uh, on my side. Yeah. No, it's okay. yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's 
very easy. You just uh, actually in the one line. after you you wrap your module, uh, you wrap your model with a bounded module object, and you define some perturbation. And your model can be arbitrarily complicated. Like here, we have a large REST net, but uh, you can use some other models as well. And uh, you, you just has have one line of code, and you can compute the bounds. If you change your model architecture, like, like I change my REST net here, I change something here, uh, you, you don't need to re-implement or re-derive the bounds, you just uh, still do the same. And our library computes the bounds automatically for you, just like you can easily get gradients from, from any more than deep learning neural network. So, and lastly, I will show the differentiability. So the bounds computed uh, by our libraries, this UB and LB, lower bound and upper bounds, are actually differentiable with respect to model parameters. So for example, here, uh, here I don't have the torch no grass decorator, so I don't have this. So that means I need a gradient. I need gradient, I, I, I get lower bounds and upper bounds, so I create some uh, scalar function for, for loss function because in PyTorch, the loss function has to be scalar. Uh, for example, I can sum all the lower bounds. Uh, you can also define some other complicated uh, loss function based on the lower and upper bounds. And you call the loss dot backward, and uh, it basically computes the gradients for for the for the bounds with respect to all the uh, model parameters. For example, here I print I print the norm of the gradient for the first convolutional layer, and you can see the gradient is non-zero. That means the gradient can be passed from the loss to the bounds and to the uh, all the uh, model widths. So you can actually. Uh, because we have the gradients, we can train the model to make the bounds tighter. That, that's a core ID in certified defense. So this is a, like a quick overview of how this frame, how our framework works. So we provide a lot of other examples, and I will go through a, a few of them uh, in this tutorial. And we have certified defense on Silver 10, 10 ImageNet, and ImageNet. And we also have pre, uh, uh, using, we are also using very complicated computer vision models at DanceNet, ResNext, and Wide ResNet. And we also have pre-trained models. If you, would, you if you just need some robust uh, model that is uh, verifiable, you can just download our pre-trained model. Uh, and we, we uh, our library also has implemented a technique called loss fusion, uh, which can speed up uh, the certified defense training by up to 1,000 times faster, which means on, on the large data set like ImageNet, the previous approach are not really feasible, but now we can also train on ImageNet. Uh, I will not go, uh, go over too much details. If you are interested in this technique, you can uh, go over our paper. Um, and we also show how to train a robust LSTM and transformer model because SLCM is especially used for, for, for example, controllers and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, for example, uh, the cyber physics system. And the transformers are really useful for NLP tasks. And we can train robust models by using the gradient of these bounds. And uh, lastly, we also show an example of uh, training a model with uh, weight perturbations. Instead of adding perturbations on the model input, we can add perturbations on model weights because uh, weights are also part of the computational graph and can be treated similarly as input. So because we are we a are, uh, uh, general framework, so we can handle weights uh, as an input of the computational graph just as the data. So uh, I will go over some coding examples here. So uh, I will connect to my server and uh, uh, clone this repository. Oh, can, can you see my commands here? Yeah, yes, we can. OK, sounds good. Um, and uh, I need to activate my conda environment. And uh, the first step is, all, of course, uh, install this library and uh, uh, just run this setup. Dot Hi. Oh, sorry. Uh, just run this, and we install this library, and uh, we have a lot of examples here. 
Uh, we have uh, examples on language, basically LCM and transformers. Sequences really show how, how we handle, uh, how we train a robust LCM model. Uh, vision is for large scale computer vision models like uh, uh, DanceNet, ResNet, and uh, Wide ResNet, and so on. So on um, large data sets like Tammy ImageNet or ImageNet. So for now, I will show a very simple example on how we train a robust LSTM. So here we have. Um, we have a very simple example. Um, or let me actually open Tmax to, to be easier. Uh, and uh, in this window, where I will open the, the code example. So, so this is how we train a robust LSTM. And uh, we have some imports. We have some parameters to define the norm and epsilon batch size and so on. These are just uh, Pretty common things, and here is a, this step function is how we train one batch of data, and I will go over this function because this is a, a core. Um, so uh, maybe I, let me go through the starting from here from the data preparation. We load the MIS data set and we set the random seeds and uh, we create the LCM sequence class for calling the LT LCM object. And uh, we define the perturbation using the perturbation LP norm uh, object, and uh, we we prepare uh, the bounded input bounded tensor object. And here we, this is the most critical step where we use the bounded module uh, class from Auto Leopard library to convert the LSTM as a bounded uh, a model that we can get bounds. So here, model is an LCM model, and model dot core is actually the real LCM because the model is a is a high level uh, model. It has other capabilities like saving and loading and so on. And the computation is defined as model dot core, and we replace this model dot core with our bounded module. So if you are curious of like how this model look at, you can just uh, uh, take a quick look. Let me see. Uh, here it is. Okay, LCM model is basically has a core. Core is basically a n dot LCM cell with a linear layer, and we have the forward function defines the computation in LCM, and the LCM object itself contains some other features like saving and loading, uh, train evaluations, and so on. That doesn't really matter here, but uh, the computation is defined by model dot core, and we compute we convert that into a bounded module. And here we define some other uh, this for tracking the uh, accuracy uh, and the loss. It doesn't really matter in our setting. And uh, okay, the, can I just ask, uh, ask, sure. qu ask one, one question because I don't really understand the problem uh, that you try to solve. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, of, but... uh, with MNIST images. Yeah, so this is just just a, basically uh, we split the MNIST image as a, a few chunks. And they inputted the model to LCM as uh, and build a classifier. So, so, for example, you can see the MNIST image one row by one row. So the MNIST image is uh, like 28 by 28. We can build. Uh, we can uh, we can give the LCM 28 input. Each one is 28 dimensional, and uh, as a sequence with 20 with a length of 28. So that's mm -hmm. basically. Uh, the, the model, what the model is doing, and we are still doing the classification. Because this is just a toy example, so we just use MNIST, and uh, you can use any realistic data set here as well, and train your LCM. Ah, okay. So in fact, you transform one image into a sequence of pixels, in fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry Try for... Try to classify um, on the yeah. sequence of pixels, okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry for not clarifying that. Yeah, uh, but, uh, okay, no, 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 uh, no, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. And now the, the main training function is here. So for uh, we we for, here we we use the epsilon schedule where we increase the perturbation every batch from small to to large because we cannot train the model using the largest epsilon at the beginning. That's gonna make the bounce explode. So the your really the trick is you train the model with a small epsilon and you gradually you increase the epsilon and until you reach the target epsilon. And, and uh, so here is uh, each time we have a slightly large epsilon and we set a new epsilon for the perturbation object. 
and uh, we we get a batch of inputs x and y. So x is the data, y is the label, and uh, we we build a time bounded tensor based on the input and uh, the perturbation. And uh, we we th this line is for uh, just uh, for word propagation. It's just for for word propagation, and we get the logics for computer clean accuracy from the LCM okay, so model. And just the perturbation in this case is you change the value of the pixel. Yeah, you change the value and, of the pixel. And, and you, can, yeah. you can change for each uh, part of the sequence. Uh, yeah, you can change. So like, uh, so suppose we have a sequence of 28 uh, uh, feature, feature vectors, yeah. and we can change each one individually. Uh, so we, we can preserve every possible input. And of course, you can define some more uh, complicated perturbation, like we, we can perturb just a part of sequence or something like that. That's mm -hmm. also possible. But here for the demonstration, we'll perturb everything. We'll perturb all the, all, all the elements in the sequence. OK, with different values uh, that can be within uh, this epsilon. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, you, 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 you can do that by creating a new perturbation class. You can uh, see how I implement this perturbation LP norm, and you can build your own perturbation class yeah. to handle those kind of uh, uh, perturbations. And uh, so, so these lines are for uh, defining the specifications, which is basically the margin uh, between the ground truth class and the other class. So after we get the logics, we can compute the margin between the, uh, for example, if uh, the image was class zero, and we can compute the margin in logics between class zero and other classes. And uh, that is going to be used for our uh, verification. Because, for example, if the margin is going to be always positive, then uh, we know this uh, example is going to be uh, 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 verifiably robust. So this is just for computing the so-called specifications, which actually I, I didn't mention we our compute bound Compute bounds method can support uh, specifications, which is basically a, a, a matrix uh, that can be merged into the last layer of the neural network. Mm -hmm. So basically, here it says uh, instead of compute the bounds for the logic directly, we compute the 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 difference, the margins between the uh, the ground truth class and all other classes. If this margin is greater, lower bound of this margin is greater than zero, then we can do we can do the verification, right? Okay. okay so, and uh, uh, so we, we compute the bounds with this specification. And the method we use cron IBP is basically a combination of cron and IBP bounds to get both efficiency and also tightness. And here we only need the lower bound. We don't need the upper bound. So we we, we uh, set the bound upper to false to save computation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we compute, uh, after we get this lower bound, uh, we can compute uh, uh, upper bound on cross entropy loss. So because uh, the classific classification problem uh, was uh, using cross entropy loss, and what we are actually doing here is, maybe I, I can show you quickly in this class, it's trying to bound the cross entropy loss. So. Here we have some loss function, and we have some perturbation set, and we want to maximize uh, the loss function uh, within the perturbation set and minimize this uh, maxed uh, loss. So here is basically by by knowing these bounds on logics, we can get the upper bound on the cross entropy. There are some tricks here, but uh, uh, you can just understand that as we, we basically we are trying to get a, a upper bound on loss function uh, on the loss function on the cross entropy loss. And after that, we just uh, take a gradient, uh, lost out backward, and uh, we're done here. And uh, in the training step, uh, we call this step, we call this uh, step function uh, to to get the loss and also its gradient. And after that, we apply the optimizer, which can be a stochastic gradient descent or atom. Uh, and uh, we, you are done for for one batch, and we just uh, run uh, a lot of batches and a lot of epochs to train on the data set. And uh, for every epoch, we are print like uh, the training accuracy, robust accuracy, loss, 
and so on. So just for monitoring. And we also have a test function, which just uh, after run Epoch, I will test uh, uh, the accuracy and the robust accuracy on the test set. Okay, uh, now I'll show you like how, how this thing runs. So just uh, run this train.py and I will do everything for you. Um, and uh, this training uh, will be will be on GPUs as we also we are monitoring the GPU usage. You can see we are using the GPU and we are using some GPU memory and we are using GPU for, for the training. And uh, we can see the loss function is decreasing and the accuracy, this is clean accuracy. Robust accuracy is basically the, the number of uh, data points you can verify. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we are, as I mentioned, we have the epsilon schedule where you increase the epsilon from small to large instead of using the largest epsilon at the beginning. That's going to make the bounds explode. So we, we, we have epsilon schedule. We start from, from small epsilon at 0 0.001. And we increase that to our target epsilon value, which is uh, 0 0.1 in 10 epochs. And uh, we will see like the accuracy of the network is actually pretty good, 90, uh, 97 percent. Like and uh, and uh, this robust accuracy is gonna be slightly decreasing because we are increasing this uh, epsilon. And for larger epsilon, it's gonna be harder to verify. So this verified accuracy is gonna be slightly decreased when the training goes on. So uh, after we uh, we can train, we can just uh, leave the thing here and uh, uh, just uh, quickly go over another example. Um, perturbation of the weights. So actually, I just want, want to show you how, how these things, how the perturbation weights are implemented here. Um, so we, we uh, because uh, in the previous example, we, we, per, we make the perturbation on the data. So, so what we do here is just uh, after we sample a batch of data, we use a bounded tensor to, uh, to wrap the tensor with the perturbation. But if the perturbation is added uh, on the uh, module, model, uh, model itself, like model weights, how, how do we handle it? Suppose we have a three layer MLP model. It's very, very simple, just like this. So, so we have three classes, uh, three layers, uh, FC1, FC2, FC3, and we have linear layers. This is just a regular definition in PyTorch. To handle the perturbation on model weights, so we need to be careful about the model weights. So basically here, we still define the three model layers. Uh, but here we replace the original weight and the bias with a bounded parameter object. So the, bound, the input of the bounded parameter object is the original weight of this uh, linear layer, and we add some perturbation to, to the weights and also bias. And the forward function is going to be the same. So basically, uh, this is the part where you define the computational graph. And when you define the computational graph, you want to make sure uh, the inputs you want to perturb to be a bounded parameter or a bounded tensor object. And that, that's all you need to do. And after that, you can uh, compute the bounds. And uh, uh, we also have a training code for the weight perturbations. Uh, it's going to be similar to the code I just showed you for the LSTM. So the critical part is here uh, where we, we get the bounds. Here it's a little bit tricky here uh, because we in this example we use a multi we, we implement the multi-GPU training and we also implement the, uh, the so-called loss fusion technique. But uh, uh, you, I don't want to get too much details here but with you uh, get the lower bounds and upper bounds, and we, we train the bounds here, basically. And here, our model is uh, a slightly different model called uh, MLP3 layer with weight perturbation, and uh, that is defined here. Basically, you replace the original n dot linear's weight with a bounded parameter object. That, that's all. And, and we can also train this network as well. And we can just train this. And while we are waiting for this one, we can take a look at this one. So we can see this is the LSTM, training a robust LSTM. And uh, the epsilon has been increased from 0 to 0 0.05 in this epoch. 
and uh, the robust accuracy looks good, and the loss function loss is also small, and accuracy is also good, close to 98% uh, accuracy. So, and its training still goes on, and uh, uh, on this side, uh, we are training uh, still a MNIST model, a regular classification model, but we perturb the weights rather than the uh, the input perturbation, so we can obtain a model that is robust to perturbation on weights. So I'm not sure if that's a real, uh, really uh, uh, useful situation, but uh, uh, at least we can uh, we demonstrate we can we can do this. Um, and the application we show in our paper is that we can actually create uh, create a, a neural network with very flat loss land landscape. So if you change the weight a little bit, the, the loss function is not going to change a lot. For uh, uh, on the other hand, for the audit ordinary model, if you perturb the weights a little bit, the, the loss function or the model output will be be changed a lot. So the uh, training, so this this part of the, it has like a ten epoch of warm up where we just do natural training. A natural training takes like two point eight seconds per epoch, and starting from the tenth epoch, we started robust training, and robust training takes like uh, eight point six uh, seconds. That's gonna be roughly three times more the cost of regular training, which is also expected because. Uh, in robust training, we need to get a bounce, and to get a bounce, we use a Cron IBP method, which basically first uh, do the IBP and then use Cron to get a final layer bounce. So the computational cost of IBP is twice the normal training, and the computation cost of Cron at the final layer is the same as a uh, 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 regular forward pro propagation. So overall, it's going to be three times slower than a regular training. So it's actually quite scalable because you can you just pay three times cost and you can get a, a model that is verifiably robust. Um, maybe a question uh, concerning uh -huh. the hyperparameters for the learning. Uh -huh. uh, are they impacted by uh, the fact that you are doing a robust uh, learning? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the question was... Uh, on the hyperparameters, oh, for instance, the learning rate, do you have to adapt the learning rate because you are doing a robust uh, learning? Yeah, uh, so for those examples, I don't really tune the learning rate a lot. I just use the same learning rate as natural training. Okay. That usually actually works. Good, good learning rate for natural training, it should also work for robust training. Oh. Um, uh, of course, uh, if you want to get a, a really, you really want to do some hyperparameter tuning, you can use a grid search to find the best yeah, hyperparameter. Yeah, but uh, uh, usually, it's sufficient to to use just the, the clean the parameter for clean training. Yeah, okay. That, that's uh, you don't need to adapt. Uh, okay. Right. Not really. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Is there any questions from other people? And you, you, you'll be able to find our uh, code. Uh, so I have demonstrated the LCM and the weight perturbations. And, it's, it's on uh, GitHub. I, I, I used your uh, your link, and it, uh, it, uh, I went through to, to GitHub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we have many other examples as well in our GitHub. And uh, we also have some pre-trained robust models using uh, uh, like a wide ResNet, Dense and ResNex on CIFAR 10 time management and image and data set. And then all, all of those you can find in our repository. And there are several works uh, that are already using this library, including my work on, on robust deep reinforcement learning and also on, on complete exact verification of neural network. And there's uh, some other people also using uh, my library. And I hope uh, this will be useful for you guys. And uh, uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you find any bugs, you can just uh, raise the GitHub issue uh, and uh, we will all try to fix it. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Personally, I will, uh, I will definitely test it. Yeah, thank uh, you. Clearly, yeah.